there is none like you. Father, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. And we thank you, Father, even as we come into your house this time. I pray, oh God, that you will touch our hearts, touch our minds. Father, even for those watching online right now, I pray, oh God, that you will touch them also, bring a special blessing to them today. For the moderator of the service, Father, anoint afresh the songs, the music, the singers, everybody that will take part for your word that will come forth. 
Father, speak to us, Lord Jesus. Continue to speak into our spirits, oh God. Father, we can do nothing without you. We recognize that we are nothing unless you are with us. So, oh God, we're going to cling to that old rugged cross. Father, the cross where you suffered, bled, and died for us, oh God. And we thank you, Father, for you sent your Son one day to redeem us, to save us from our sins. And so today we are here to give you the glory. We are here to give you the praise for what you have done for us. Father, moving us individually, collected, Father, let your will be done, oh God, throughout this service, oh God. All the songs, oh Father, that will be sung, oh God, will touch somebody's heart, oh God. And Father, even as we leave here, we'll go with a song, with a praise on our hearts. We give you thanks, Father, for we place everything in your hands. Continue to anoint for your sake, Lord Jesus, those who are sick. Oh God, those who are suffering in whatever way, oh God. You are the healer, you are the deliverer. Those who are bereaved, Father, they've lost loved ones, oh God. But you, oh God, are the comforter. Jesus, continue to comfort your people. Continue to keep your people. Let them know, oh God, that it is not the end, oh God. So we will continue to look to you. We'll continue to praise you. Thanking you for everything, oh God. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Jesus. Be glorified in this place today. We thank you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name and our glad hearts say thank you. Our glad hearts say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And exchange is someday for a crown. So I cherish, oh, so I cherish the old. Sing it with me till my trophies, till my trophies. I'll be down. Give God all the praise, all the glory this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. So today is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. All those who are like fathers, all the male figures in people's lives. 
And today we're here to celebrate our Heavenly Father, as we do every Sunday. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father who, he encourages us, he helps us in times of need, who loves us unconditionally, who never changes the same yesterday, today, forever. So we just, just join in us today and just worship and praise his holy name. Hallelujah.
shine, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is power.
We'll now do our morning scripture reading. Thank you, Jesus. Stay in the mindset of worship, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our scripture is from Psalm 33, verses 1 to 22. Psalm 33, verses 1 to 22. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth, gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habita habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike, he considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, he is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word this morning. Hallelujah.
Lord Jesus. You're a good, good Father, Lord Jesus. When no one else is there, Lord, you are there, Lord Jesus. You are always there, Lord Jesus. You never change. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are perfect in all your ways. You are perfect in all your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. Hallelujah. Because you are. Lord Jesus for being a good good father to all of us Lord Jesus it, whether your father is around your earthly father is around whether they're not Lord Jesus we just thank you Lord that you will, will never change you will always be around thank you Lord Jesus we give you the praise and give you the glory this morning hallelujah we will now take this morning's tithes and offering thank you Jesus hallelujah give you the praise I'll just say a prayer of the offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing this morning's tithes and offering. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing it to be used for you, for your furthering of your service, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done, allowing us to give, whether it's a lot, whether it's a little. Just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your provision. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Lord, for your presence this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And now leave the rest of the service to Pastor in Jesus' name. you this morning. God bless you this morning. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Open the windows of heaven. Rain.
I'm not talking about anybody else but me. Lord, I want it to rain on me. Rain on me. Not just any kind of rain, but the rain that comes from heaven. Lord, you know my request. It's simply rain. this time in the presence of the Lord. We thank Sister Abby Gale and Sister Nordia, Sister Clove, and everybody here, everybody here. And even in this atmosphere of worship, we've asked God to let it rain. And, and I, I want us to be prepared for that rain. Because, you see, we have asked God for it to rain on us. But we have to ensure that we're able to handle the rain when it comes. You see, there's this kind of rain we don't need an umbrella for. So I want us to just put our umbrellas down and say, Lord, let it rain. Rain until I'm soaked. Let it rain. The rain of your Holy Spirit. The rain of your presence. The rain of your love. Get ready for the rain. Get ready for the rain. Get ready for the rain. Hallelujah. It's as if we're lifting up our hands and saying, Lord, just let it rain. today make sure that God is worshipped all time belongs to God and God just lends us time and he says here is some time do something constructive with it so that's why we are worshippers first God created us to worship Him. Sister Madge got in touch with me the other day and said that she would like to do a tribute to the fathers. I thought the fathers would have been shouting right there, but they kept their mouth shut. So, Sister Madge, at this time, over to you and the ladies. Thank you. 
What a great day it is. We give God thanks for this is the day that he has made. I wonder if there's anybody who's rejoicing today. Amen, amen. You know, um, it, it's, it's always a strange thing, you know. We, we are a privileged group of people. We, we were hearing about it today in the Sunday School, and we really are a privileged group of people. God has brought us from a mighty long way. I, I was at the door last Sunday, as I always am, and as the brethren were coming out, Sister Fran introduced me to a friend of hers, a neighbor, a neighbor. And her neighbor stopped and I was having a chat with her and she says, you don't know me. So I says, no, I don't know you. She says, but I know you. That's one thing, be scared of that. Somebody know you and you don't know them, right? <laughs> but it was all good. And so she told me her name, she told me her name. And I said, so hi, and she says, yeah, my sister's name is Sharon, you would know Sharon, you would know Sharon. You went to school with her and she had so much good things to say about you. I wonder if she went to the same school <laughs> that I went to. So I said to her, so how is Sharon these days? She says, oh, Sharon died in March. I thought, Sharon died? Sharon died, our good friend, our, our school friend, died. But yet God has kept me. Yeah. And, I, and I didn't know what to say. I was, I was shocked because I hadn't heard. And this was a point that struck me. She says, the last time you spoke to her, you encouraged her a lot. We, uh, we had had our 40-year reunion just across the road. And she said, that she told me that you sat next to her and you encouraged her a lot. And that's yet another one of our school friends gone, uh, one by one. We only left school the other day. <laughs> and I once again thought about the goodness of God. Because cancer got hold of that young lady and took her out took her out, but it taught me that wherever you go, no matter who you come in contact with, make sure you do the right thing. Make sure you talk good to people. Make sure you have a kind word at all times. What, you think there's some people don't get on my last nerve? But guess what, I probably get on one or two people's last nerve too. It's like, that's the way life is. But we have to learn to just be nice. Be nice. I thought I'd say that because we, we, we are in a privileged position. And I thought about this saying, mercy that suits my case. Because we grew up together but somehow God chose to have mercy on me that I can be here. He had mercy on her that he would take her out of her sickness. There's a mercy for everyone in here. God has a mercy for every one of us. Our scripture today is one more of rejoicing more rejoicing and uplifting on this Sunday. It was taken from the book of Psalm 33. We read from one through to the end, Psalm 33. And as I looked at Psalm 33 and was um, reading up on the Psalm, there is a thought that maybe it should be part of Psalm 32. But no matter where you place this verse, 
it's powerful anyhow. The latter part of 32 says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart. Now, do we understand what it means to rejoice? Rejoice means to shout for joy, be happy, make some noise. You ever look to somebody and you ask them, so how are you? So they say, oh, I'm good. They do not look anything like what they are saying. And it's important, you see, that people know that there is gladness in the Lord. The life that we are living, we're going to have the same problems like everybody else. If we don't get saved and then all of a sudden our problems disappear and all is good. But when we take on the name of the Lord Jesus, we know we have an anchor that keeps the soul. It is steadfast and it is sure. So we move into 33. It says, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. You remember we just read that. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely. For the upright, it suits the righteous man. There's something about the righteous man praising God. Remember, the Bible teaches us that let everything that have breath, the leaves have breath, the trees have breath, everything that have breath should praise the Lord. But guess what? The upright, there's a difference in their praise. See, when, when, when we're talking about the upright, those who love the Lord, those who are of God, they look at where God has brought them from and they can do nothing but praise him. You see, when I'm going through, all I'm doing is just praising him. When folks say stuff about me, all I'm doing is praising him. Uh, we get much talk these days about the cost of living crisis. However, I was at the airport the other day and I was looking for space to push my suitcase. So, so, so the cost of living is one thing, but people are still doing everything that they want to do. So the gas bill came in. No, no, let me just say the energy bill came in. Let me, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. The energy bill comes in and we look at it and we say, oh Lord, how I'm going to manage. But you see, the upright in heart says, thank God I've got a house where I've got energy in it. Now yeah. ah, we're looking at things differently because we are a child of God. We're not saying, how am I going to manage? We say, all of my help comes from uh, you've got to have a different mind, a different attitude. Because everybody's in the bill. Everybody is getting a bill. And what we need is to understand that we, the way that we actually um, focus or what we focus on, I'm just going to need some batteries on this. All right, we, we, the, the, what we focus on is how we are going to behave. So can you imagine, imagine the upright in heart? The upright are the ones, let me just change this, thank you. The upright in heart is going to say, God, you brought me through last week. I know you're able to take me through this week. I know that in year whatever, I was struggling then, but I am here today. The upright and in heart is going to say, God, if you did it for Moses, if you did it for Abraham, if you did it for Isaac, you can do it for me. Because you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Praise is comely. It suits the upright person. 
may feel ill in our bodies, but we say, I'm going to praise God anyhow. Look, and I see that, that even those who are in pain, those who are sick, they're saying, I must be in the house of the Lord because praise is comely for the upright. We shouldn't be complaining about anything open our wardrobes and our clothes uh, and we can pick and choose one for every day of the year yes, all right i got one person who knows that truth <laughs> we can pick and choose every week we come into the house of the lord and somebody think you've been shopping you ain't been shopping you're just using what you already have what do we have to complain about? How dare we complain when God has kept us and brought us from a long way? How dare we complain? We hear people complaining that it was too hot. And now today they say, take me back. <laughs> complaining about the heat then complain about the cold and if God was to listen to everybody he even God would get dizzy but God knows what's good for his children God knows what's good for the land God knows what we are in need of so we pray we pray and we say God I need a car and God provides you, and I better not mention any car names in case you have one of those cars. But God provides you with a car and you say, no, Lord, not that car. That's only a 900 cc. I need a four liter. What you'll be doing with that when you're paying so much for petrol, I don't know, but you just want something that is big, it's fast, and God says, here is your 900 cc. I know God's talking to me right now, but I just move on. How could I drive a 900 cc? And everybody, remember I told you last week, everybody passing me. I think it was in Bible class. Everybody passing me on the roads. No, no. I'm saying, Lord, that's not for me. God says, by the way, I do not have a 900 cc car. That's for everybody watching online. I don't, I don't, I don't. And for those of you who have it, the Lord bless and keep you and make his face. You got it. But what God is trying to then teach me is patience that if you treat the 900 cc good, when you move up to a 1.4 liter, you're going to treat it good. How dare I complain when God has provided me with what I need and I'm still begging for what I want. Uh, you look over your fence and you see your neighbor has got a swimming pool. You just order one for yourself and you can't even, I know you can finish that for me. But you want to be <laughs> like everybody else. Rather than rejoicing in the Lord for what he has given you, you say, I want a swimming pool. You get the swimming pool and then realize the swimming pool needs water. You realize that the swimming pool needs some uh, uh, additives, things to keep it, you know, good. You realize you need someone to come and clean your pool. Next thing you say, God, please make a way for me to get rid of the same. <laughs> I'm going to get back to this. It's about us rejoicing for what we have. Thank God I got a garden. Thank God I got a house. There's some people living 60 stories up and will be glad to have a garden. Praise is comely 
for the upright, why would the righteous be complaining? What do we have to complain about? Well, my job. Well, if I don't have a job, then I can't pay my bills. All right, Lord, I thank you for my job. It's the people on the job. Well, shine your light so that they can change. Don't just be miserable. They come in and they say good morning to you, and you feel you're too good to say good morning back. They vex you. And rather than you say, God bless you anyhow, you wait for that time to get your own back. I ain't talking about anybody in the house. It's just our online viewers, of course, whom we love dearly. But we have to admit that sometimes we are complaining when all we need to do is says, God, I thank you. The last few weeks we've been talking about giving God thanks. Just be grateful for what God has given us. Do you realize, and I'm told, I'm not a doctor, but I'm told that it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. I say to you from time to time, and even those watching online, just look at somebody now and try and keep miserable. <laughs> Immediately as you look at somebody else, you've got to smile. Even if it is you're just laughing at the way they look, <laughs> you're going to have to smile. Well, when I look at Jesus, all I can do is smile. We take our eyes off God, and that's why we start to see the things around us. We are not supposed to see the things around us because God says, look up for our redemption. Draw of nine. But what we're doing, we're worried about this. We're worried about that. How am I going to manage? What about tomorrow? And God has not promised us tomorrow. Can you imagine, and we should do this from time to time, if this was our last day on earth, how would we be? How would we treat people? In fact, not even how we would treat people, how would we treat God? Would we start to give him thanks for everything? Would we start to be so grateful to him for where he has brought us from? Would we start to change our whole mentality? Only you can answer that. But I live like every day is my last. Because I know that at any time God is coming back for his saints. I know he's going to do that. And because I don't know when, every time I get a chance to praise him, I am going to praise him. And then we say, well, how do I praise him? The next verses go on to show us. So we praise the Lord with a harp. We sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. So now, that's for our musicians. And maybe from time to time while you're singing, you would see our faces. You see, uh, Brother Darren is just giving us instructions and we're listening to his instructions. And if we don't follow those instructions, you'll see faces change because we're not doing what the leader is telling us to do. You didn't know that, right? You didn't know that. Because there is a level of skill that is expected even in the house of God. We cannot come to God worshiping any and any how. God deserves the best. 
So even when we sing in the song, we cannot have one person in B flat and the other person in Z sharp. You didn't know that exists, right? I hear it every Sunday. We are making a joyful noise, but that noise must be in order. You know, the, 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 the fragrance, the worship, even this morning as we're going forth and we are worshiping, praising God. God is saying, yes, I will live in that. Because he inhabits the praises of who? His people. So we can't play the music just anyway. And say, well, you, you, you can sing onward, Christian soldiers, but we're going to play nearer my God to thee. And while you're singing nearer my God to thee, we start singing Pentecostal playing, Pentecostal fire is falling. Uh, we will pray that it really fall on us as that was happening. There will be pure confusion in church. It is important that we play in the spirit. And everything meshing together. Listen, I am probably the worst singer in here. Me and Sister Madge. But apart from us two, right? Me and Sister Madge, we're going to make a joyful noise no matter who likes it or not. I remember Sister Madge says to me, Pastor, you're not going to put my voice on, are you? You're not going to put my voice on. Of course I'm going to put it on because it's not about what you are saying. God is going to change the ears of somebody. And they're going to say, I love that praise because it's coming from the heart. Too often we're looking to, to have this sweet voice. And there's some people with sweet, sweet voices but would never raise it unto God. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not quite suit my voice. What do you mean it don't suit your voice? Get up and give God some praise. God bless you with such a lovely voice. You get asked to sing. You say, well, well, no, 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 pastor, I can't manage it today. Wanting it for a show. God hasn't given us our voices for a show. We are to praise him. And God will make it right because we are giving him what he desires. And God, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. God will touch the ears of somebody. And even as you feel that you ain't sounding so good. That's why I just open my mouth and sing. And then you'll say, sing, pastor. Because, because what God is allowing you to hear is not what actually is coming out. I'll leave that for you to work out. The word of the Lord says, and giving us reasons why we should rejoice, for the Lord, the word of the Lord rather, is right, and all his works are done in truth. Right there, that's something to praise God for. The word of the Lord is right. Now look at this. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of God. So when I look at the trees, when I hear the birds, when that cat has come into my garden to eat what I put out for the birds... I have to remember the earth is full. <laughs> you all missed that. You see, there's some things that we would complain about. And the Lord says, that's my goodness. When you're ready to complain with that driver that cut you up on the way to church today. Not you, I'm talking about me. I just thank God anyhow. When you see that puddle and you think, you know what, let me go straight through it. God says, no, there's somebody walking towards the puddle. Of course, there's nobody in here. 
The earth is full of the goodness, so watch what we do because we have to ensure that as righteous people, we are representing the goodness of God. You see, there is no forgetting whose we are and who we are. We must not forget it. Look at the power of God. By his word, by his word, the heavens were created. That's what he did. He just said, heavens, come. Which one of us can just speak and something happens? We can't even speak to our children and something happens right away. Well, my children are big. I'm talking about you with the young children. Be hard of hearing. Hard of hearing. But God spoke. And even the heavens listened to him. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. God said, let there be and there was. That's power. Somebody with that proud power, that kind of power, I've got to praise him. I've got to worship him. Got to lift him up. I've got to revere this person. I've got to respect this person. Because he was able to part the waters. He was able to make large lakes and call them oceans. There is a world that was created just by his voice. So what am I saying today, brethren? It is a time of rejoicing, not a time of feeling sorry for ourselves. Our problems, what did Paul say? Our afflictions are but for moment. And it is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It is not worthy to be compared. So every time I said, every time I get a chance to lift up the name of God, I don't have to wait till Sunday morning. I don't have to wait for anything except once I am awake. First thing in the morning, God, I thank you. I was asleep. I didn't know anything that happened. The thunders roared. The lightning strike. The rain fell. But still some people were fast asleep. So when we wake up in the morning, we got to say, God, I thank you. In a time of thanksgiving, sometimes people say thanks just because they believe it's the right thing to do. It's just like sometimes people say sorry just to get you off their back. But I want us today that when we are rejoicing in the Lord and we are grateful to God, it's coming from the heart. We are well and truly thankful for the things that he has done. We are well and truly thankful that he has provided for us. But now we have to even move on from that to a place of worshiping him for who he is. Because yes, we can clap, we can shout, we can dance because that's what he has done for us. But now, what about for who he is? He is the almighty God. He is the everlasting father. And he is the prince of priests. So yes, rejoice. Because praise is comely for the upright. But don't stay there. Move on to a place of worship. Move on to a place where we are just focusing on him. Focus on God. 
Let us bow our heads at this time. Focus on God. Take your eyes off what's happening around. Take your eyes off it. Focus on God because he is the God of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He is still God in spite of no matter what. It's about God. Put your mind and your heart on God. Yes, your bill will get sorted. Yes, your job will get sorted. Yes, your children will get sorted. Keep your eyes on God. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely. In the light, in the light of His glory and grace. I wonder if you could sing this song. It simply says, "Turn, turn, turn your, your eyes upon Jesus." Somebody who's grateful today. Somebody who's thankful. You want to come and say, God, I thank you. You want to say, God, I thank you. I may not even see the result right now, but I want to thank you. I want to thank you. That's it. That's it. I want to thank you. Hallelujah. We're going to cover you in prayer. We're going to cover you in prayer. Come forward. Come forward. Yes. Come on. You want to say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. God bless you as you're coming. Look for God bless you as you're coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the things of the sun, and the things of the sun will go straight in the light of his glory.
we're going home. We're going home. Yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord, yes, Lord from, from the bottom. bottom. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We are so grateful. God, your word has come to remind us that we are to rejoice because praise is comely for the upright. God, we thank you for everything that's been said and done. We thank you, God, for the moderator, for the musicians, the singers, Father, for your word, for those who have come forward in need of prayer. Father, we know by faith that you have answered every one of those prayers. We are grateful, Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are so good. Even as we leave here, Father, we will not leave your presence, but we will be rejoicing that our prayers have been answered. So, God, we thank you. We thank you, God. Our hearts are forever grateful. Bless those who are even watching online. We thank you for them. We thank you, God, for the blessing they are even to this church. And we thank you, God, that this message will reach far and wide. And people will come to know you as their personal Savior. So we thank you for that, Lord. Be with your people here, there, and everywhere. Wherever your name is called upon, let someone be saved. God. And we thank you for your deliverance today. Thank you for your healing today. Everything, God, we put in your hands, even as we say now and forevermore, God, we are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, amen. say amen again. Amen. To the depths. Yes, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now unto him that is able to keep me from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. And all God's people say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen.